Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Peter back with another video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope everyone's having a great weekend. Uh, today, I want to talk about the TV that I purchased and the TV that I was thinking about purchasing. Um, people have asked me, hey Peter, you're getting the Series X, you're getting the PS5. How are you going to be upgrading your TV? It's necessary to upgrade a TV uh, for, launch, uh, for the launch of the consoles. I will break it all down to you for you guys right now. And I want to start off by saying that this TV that I invested in is really nice. It's probably one of the nicest displays I've ever owned. And I'm so happy and thankful that I was able to afford this TV. So I went ahead and got the LG uh, CX, the OLED display. Um, as you can see, I put an image on my uh, TV uh, with my Xbox One X on. The colors is, are so vibrant. The OLED technology, just like the lighting, it's just insane, man. It's really good. might be hard to tell in this picture, but you just got to see it in person to believe it. Um, I was playing Call of Duty in NBA 2K21 the other night, and it's just mind-blowing um, that it, the colors are so damn vibrant, and they just pop out. Uh, the TV I was going to get before the OLED was the Sony X900, uh, which is uh, it's on sale right now on Amazon, and you can score a really good deal on it on Amazon. I thought about getting it, but before I got my OLED, I already owned a Samsung uh, LED smart TV, so I've had that one for about almost five years, and I didn't want to make the change from LED to an LED like the X900. I wanted something different, something that was gonna that was gonna go with uh, for the near for the foreseeable future, for the next uh, five to seven years possibly, and even just to have a set that's future proof for my gaming consoles, and that's what I led towards the OLED and. The TV is so thin, it's just ridiculously uh, so, so thin, and it's got Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos on there as well, which I don't really need a sound bar. I never owned a sound bar, and I never had a surround sound system. It's got a built-in surround sound system in the TV, and it's just super loud when you turn it on. It's so damn nice, man. Such a nice feature. The reason why I invested in a TV is because I'm getting my PS5 day one. Um, I'm getting an Xbox Series X. And those consoles are very capable machines. And this TV, what separated this TV OLED compared to the X900, is that it has four HDMI 2.1 ports. That's the key on why I even bought the, this upgrade to this uh, OLED display. Because it's got four HDMI 2.1 uh, imports. So compared to the Sony X900, you have two HDMI 2.1 uh, imports, uh, inputs, I should I say. And it's definitely great to have more than one input because you're going to have multiple. I'll have multiple consoles. I'm sure everybody that's watching this video will probably eventually invest in uh, multiple consoles as well. And just the capability is HDMI 2.1 for you guys that don't know. Uh, they offer uh, 48 gigabytes uh, of, per second of uh, you know memory bandwidth as well as uh, a refresh refresh rate up to 120 hertz. So both of these two TVs do the 120 hertz refresh. And that's going to be so nice for when you're playing a game like Call of Duty Black Ops or even all other games that are going to be compatible with the, the refresh rate of 120 hertz. And it's going to have variable re refresh rate, which the new consoles will both of them have. They're both capable of that. And these two TVs can both uh, output that as well. And it's going to have uh, free sync as well. Uh, the OLED does have G sync, whereas the Sony X900 doesn't have G sync. But that's for basically for if you want to hook up your PC and play, uh, do some PC gaming on it. Uh, I'm strictly a console gamer. So I'll be hooked. That's not that doesn't really apply to me, but I didn't want to get it because of the 2.1 capability is having 120 hertz uh, as a refresh rate for these games that are going to be compatible, and as well as um, having the variable rate refresh rate, which is super nice. Um, not much lag. It's just instant 
uh, response time. And I think that's definitely key to have. And as soon as developers take uh, de advantage of the capable of the hardware, both hardware is going to be capable of. I think as time goes on, you'll see more games that will become uh, uh, 4K60 as a default, but also have the option to do 120 hertz. So, and 120 frames per second is uh, what I meant to say. But I, you know, really like the Sony X900. It's got a great chip in it. It's got two HDMI 2.1 uh, ports. And the thing is, it's an LED, and I previously owned a Samsung LED, which uh, I only had uh, one uh, UHD uh, HDMI 2.0 port. That TV wasn't uh, an HDMI 2.1 capable TV. It's a it's a couple years old, so I've got it back in 2016. So I think HDMI 2.1, not that many TVs offered it at the time, but now uh, even some TVs are offering it, but the OLED, LG OLED, has not one, not two, not three, but four, four HDMI 2.1 ports. And that's what made me go OLED because of my PS5 and Series X will require the 2.1. And I'm sure at launch, they already announced a couple of games that will get the take advantage of the 2.1. But for those of you that don't want to invest in a future-proof TV or even just a TV that has the HDMI 2.1 features in it, it's good to wait as well. The only reason why I say that is because only a handful of games are going to be taking advantage of the 120 refresh uh, refresh rate in frames per second uh, and the whole variable uh, refresh rate, which stands for VRR. And I think that uh, moving forward as time goes on, as more games become compatible with uh, these uh, features of 2.1, I think you should... Uh, you'll see these TVs drop in price or you'll see more uh, TVs become a valuable option at that um, at a lower price, at a mid price, whereas right now they're kind of expensive, but if you have the budget, you can invest in it early. Uh, I would recommend doing it because uh, some users don't need it right away, but there are some other users that have reached out to me like, hey, man, I got my consoles pre-ordered. What's the best TV? What's the best set that I, I should go with? If you're, in, if you're, if you're on a budget, I'd recommend going with the Sony X900. I think it's a great TV. It's a great mid-range TV. It's a great, great for gaming, great for TV as well, uh, television, should I say. And it says has the uh, two HDMI 2.1 imp uh, inputs to that I mentioned. And Sony is yet still yet to make a firmware update. I think they might have. They might be dropping it soon because uh, the PS5 is going to release in a couple weeks, and I think that they want to have. PlayStation fans that bought this uh, TV, they want to have it ready day one at, on launch to have those capabilities uh, to, uh, for your PS5 and for the TV itself. But I went with the OLED. It was a little bit out of my budget, but I was like, you know what? I want to have the future-proof TV. I want to have something that's going to be set with for the next five to seven years. Uh, or should I say, as well as these consoles exist, and they're during the last lifespan of these consoles, which normally is about five to seven years. So I went with the LG OLED, the CX model, and it's a great TV. I can't wait for game. The new consoles come out within a couple of weeks. We are three weeks away from launch from the Xbox Series X, November, November 10th in America on Tuesday, and the PS5, November 12th on a Thursday in America. I think the PS5 is releasing November 19th worldwide, all over around the world. So I can't wait to uh, get both units. I'm looking forward to playing uh, all the new, latest and greatest games and excited to see them running on this OLED and excited to see them at that 120 hertz refresh rate, taking advantage of the VRR and as well as um, some games that are fully going to be native 4K with 60 frames per second locked. I can't wait, guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think uh, about uh, these TVs. And I know there's some other TVs that are out there on the market that do offer a, the refresh rate of 120 hertz and that do have the HDMI 2.1 uh, inputs. Uh, I just narrowed it down to these two TVs. This was just my personal preference of what I was leaning towards. Uh, had the initial impression of going with the Sony X900 at first. 
but I felt like I wanted something different than LED. I'm not knocking LED. LEDs are nice TVs, guys. They are so bright and vibrant. And I owned a Samsung LED TV before, but I wanted—I didn't want to make the switch from LED to LED. I wanted something different, something new and exciting. So I went with the OLED. And I've had it for a week. I've been blown away. It's such a nice set of uh, a TV. The technologies that they has in it. It's got all the nuts and bolts in it. It's future proof. I will recommend uh, get uh, getting a warranty with this TV. Uh, my previous TVs, I haven't got any warranties. I just the, the, the standard default warranty, which is the one-year manufacturer warranty. But with this one, I've heard there has been some issues from users reporting that it's got a burn-in issue where the image just displays and it burns in when you're playing video games or even just watching television. Uh, I didn't want to take any chances because it is a very expensive uh, display. Uh, and I was like, I, I just went with the warranty, a three-year warranty, and better safe than sorry. If something happens within the three years, I will be able to replace it with, with the brand new TV, the brand new OLED. So that's why I would recommend getting the warranty with it. Uh, you just never know. Technology is always evolving, and sometimes... To certain, I mean, I haven't knock on wood. I haven't had any TVs break down on me that I've purchased in the past for gaming or even just uh, for uh, tele to watch TV in general. But with this OLED, uh, I didn't want to take any chances because it is a an expensive set, and I went with the warranty, so I'm uh, secured. Got insurance on it for uh, three years, and uh, I just would recommend getting it as well if you guys do want to invest in the OLED. So. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am so damn excited for have this TV in my possession and have it hooked up and have it set up the way I want it to. I'm so damn excited to have to, be, to know that we are three weeks away from launch. Xbox Series X, Tuesday, November 10th. PS5, Thursday, November 12th. Exciting times ahead, guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your uh, day and weekend. Uh, stay safe. Stay healthy, and uh, God bless. Please hit the like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me. It would mean a lot for the channel. And you guys, take care. I will catch you guys in my next video. Take care, God bless, and keep pushing forward. All right, guys. Peace.